Good morning, friends. Hello. Greetings. Hi. Aloha. There you are. Go pack. That usually does it with this crowd. Yeah. Man, it's amazing what works here. If I had said tar, nobody would have said heels. Um, if you all would, just could we scooch in a little tighter? Uh, we, we would really like to avoid having to use overflow if at all possible. So if you're able to scooch in, we have some cootie spray for after the service, so don't worry. Scooch in, get to know your neighbors a little, and make room. Thank you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter! What a joy it is to be together on this glorious, truly glorious Easter Sunday. Uh, delighted to be able to worship with you, delighted to have some opportunity to reflect on the risen Lord Jesus the Christ. Uh, want to welcome you. My name is Ben, if we've not met, and I'm delighted to be one of the pastors here. And we've got a, a beautiful time of worship together planned. Uh, just wanted to mention a couple quick things. One, if... Uh, if you have a, a child who would like to have a worship packet, we keep those right outside these doors. And uh, as a, a part of our worship service today, we'll be having a children's message. So uh, any young disciples are welcome to come forward. Just make your way up when Emily uh, comes up, and, and they will be delighted. I'll, I'll announce it, of course, but wanted uh, our kids to know that would be part of the service today. 
uh, want to say a special word of welcome to those who are worshiping with us online today. I'm glad you could join in on the live stream. And, uh, and uh, as we begin our, our time of worship, I think in many ways Easter sort of feels like the finish line, uh, especially if you've been observing Lent and uh, kind of has built up to this. Uh, it's really the highest holy day that we have in the Christian faith. And yet it's really not meant to be the end. It is meant to be the beginning. And so uh, we have a, a quick video featuring several of our lay folks uh, inviting all of us to enter in more deeply into the opportunities of ministry we have before us. Some of us have been engaged for quite a time already, and if so, let's go deeper. And if you're uh, just on the periphery, just beginning to explore or reconnect with faith, we encourage you to, to step in. So now let's have this video First Carry is grounded in love and deeply faithful, offering many points of connection and community, both on Sunday mornings and throughout the week. Whether you're an adult, youth, or child, whether you have abundant time or limited, there are so many opportunities to plug in. Adult and young adult ministries exist to build community for all to experience belonging and explore God's goodness. Small group offerings and lifelong learning classes are just some of the ways for adults to dive deeper into their faith. First Carry Children and Youth provide an opportunity for young disciples to learn, imagine, and grow in the presence of God's goodness. With opportunities on Sundays and throughout the week, First Carry invests in the generation. Outwardly focused, we engage in outreach opportunities that are centered in Christ's love and make a difference within the community. Whether it's feeding the hungry, teaching young people, or building homes, we can make an impact together. May we lean into the season ahead with great hope for connection, we're glad you're here. Your presence makes us whole. And your presence makes us whole. As we gather to worship and praise the risen Lord, we want to encourage everyone to fill out the connect card that you found in your worship order. Uh, you may put it in the offering plate a little bit later in the service. You may also scan the QR code if you would prefer to share information in that way. We would especially encourage those of you who may be a first-time guest and visitor or who are not currently on our communications list to share this information so we may stay connected. Again, welcome and we are glad that you are here. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God.
now. Please stand as you're able for the call to worship. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice and sing for joy.
in Christ. I just want to take a moment to welcome you to worship and personally extend my joy. I just want to take a moment to welcome you to worship and personally extend my joy that you have been able to join us in this time. I hope that the joy of Easter will be with you throughout this service and throughout the coming days as we celebrate that the tomb is empty and that Jesus is risen indeed. Again, welcome. of prayer, we will begin with a familiar Easter litany and then offer intercessory prayers. Let us pray. Lord of life, by submitting to death you conquered the grave. By being lifted high on a cross you draw all people unto yourself. By giving so fully and completely of yourself, by having power over death, you restore to humanity all that we have lost. Throughout this Easter season, we proclaim that you are the Lord of life and light, casting out fear, full of perfect love and grace. All praise to you now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayers. Bless you, Lord, for your new creation. Form us into your people and order our lives in you. We pray now for each person here and for all those closest to us, our families, friends, and neighbors. We pray for all those who serve our communities and nation to make our communities and world a better place. We pray for those in troubled regions of the world, regions filled with strife, poverty, suffering, or oppressive rule. We pray for all those who have a hard time finding new life, meaning, and hope. Victorious God, we give thanks for the joy of your church and for the people here at First Carry and for the many ways you are at work for good. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. With all these people and in all these circumstances, reveal to us, O oh God, what action you would have us take. In these prayers, we give thanks for our covenant connection with you and one another and for the many ministries that deepen our discipleship and benefit your kingdom. Amen.
And now I want to invite you to stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Today I'll be reading from John's gospel, the 20th chapter, beginning in the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. be seated. At this time, I do want to invite up our children for Emily, our children's ministry associate, has a special message just for you. see me okay? You guys see me okay? Can you see me? Perfect. I can see you too. That's awesome. Well, where are your Easter baskets? <laughs> Do you have one? Oh my goodness. I am so glad that you brought it. You don't have to go get it. You don't have to go get it. Good idea though. Good idea. I brought my very first Easter basket. This was my first Easter basket when I was a baby. Can we say, oh, oh, I love my special Easter basket. That's my twin brother right there, and he has a matching blue one, just saying. So I brought my
my Easter basket because Pastor Martha promised me that there would be an egg hunt today. I don't see any eggs hidden. Good point. Do you see any eggs, Willie? Um, I think I, I, I got three from the Easter bunny piece he gave me and then this suit. Uh. <laughs> he also, he also puzzle. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, let's see. Do we see any eggs? Can somebody go get that egg? <laughs> Beam the doors down up here. Okay. All right. Let's see. Good things come in threes. Three days. I think there might be three. I don't see any. Egg. Oh. Egg. What? Where? Where? Egg. Utter chaos. All right, we found all three eggs. We can have a seat. Hey, good job, guys. I don't know where that one came from. That's not that one's not mine. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> who thinks that these are my favorite Easter candy? Either sweet tarts, chicks and bunnies, or Starburst jelly beans. What do y'all think? I don't hear anything. Wait, what? Ninja suit. Ninja suit? Five dollars. A hundred dollars? Needs to go in the offering plate. Okay. Listen to this. Always wear your bunny ears. Did anybody bring bunny ears today? Not me. I was Not going me. to. I was going to wear my boots. Not me. Okay. Do y'all know, do y'all know this about bunnies? No matter how quiet you are, bunnies can hear everything. Did you know that with their big ears like that? Yeah. So I think, because we don't have actual bunny ears with us, we should remember to put on our own bunny ears and be listening for all the ways that God has blessed us today. I heard them singing a joyful noise, playing a joyful noise earlier. Did y'all hear that? Later today, whether you're shaking an egg to figure out what's inside, and you can praise God for that, or... You're hearing a prayer as you go to bed tonight. Remember that, listening like a bunny, right? Listening like a bunny. Okay, maybe there'll be candy in this one. No. <laughs> now this is hilarious. Don't forget to hop. Can you hop for us, William? Yeah. Boom. <laughs> I love it. Okay, if I hop, Right now, I might knock over something. But what I was thinking about is bunnies, if they see something that they want, they go hopping along, right? And they're really, really excited. So I was thinking that today, we could be extremely excited. We could hop like bunnies since we're not actually going to do this. I don't know what this is talking about. But I think that we can be extremely excited because what is today? Easter. Easter. Easter egg hunt. It is Easter Sunday. It is not just a normal Sunday. We don't do all these big celebrations on a normal Sunday. And we're celebrating that Christ came back, right? It's a miracle. It's a really big job. Okay, last one. This better be a jelly bean. Nope. nope. No jelly bean. This says, okay, I'm really sorry. Never forget your basket. And all of you forgot your baskets. I'm but special, so we can't. Not William. Everyone else forgot except him. Yeah, but that's okay. You can get your baskets later. What is really interesting to me is in the lesson that we just heard, Mary goes to the tomb because she's actually going with some friends, and I wonder if she's carrying a basket because she's bringing things that she wants to honor Jesus with. Y'all might have heard that word anoint one time. That just means that they're honoring Jesus. And I wonder when she was carrying her basket, is if she was ex as excited as we are today, we are all so excited because we have a huge celebration. I wonder, was Mary excited? What do y'all think? Yeah. Maybe shocked? A little bit shocked? Because she thought he was there, right? She was sad. But then she got there and what happened? Nobody was there. It all came true just like they said it would. Jesus um, rose from the dead and it's really it's an amazing miracle and I'm so excited to celebrate it with y'all today. 
We are going to say a quick prayer before I send you back to your grown-ups. This prayer is going to be different today. Are you ready? Yes. Because we're hopping and we're celebrating, it's going to be a really silly prayer, but it's going to be fun. We're still talking to God. When I say something, instead of you repeating it, you're going to say this. You listening? Bunny ears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hop, hop, hop. Okay, so let's let everybody to do that with us. Everybody, let's practice. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, ha, ha, ha. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this great, great time together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hop, hop, hop. God, thank you so much for your great love, which is all over this place today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hop, hop, hop. Thank you for this great celebration. We love you so much, and we are so excited to spend the rest of the day celebrating you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hop, 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 amen. I will see you guys later. If you've spent much time in a cemetery, you know that often the tombstones will have epitaphs on them, words engraved in stone that tell something usually about the dearly departed. Often it'll be something very simple like beloved father, devoted daughter, humble servant. Some will have symbols, uh, symbols of things like the Masonic rites, symbols of nationality like a flag, symbols of faith like our cross. Sometimes they'll have words that, uh, that are really messages from those who have uh, died, uh, messages like, do not weep for I am yet alive, or my personal favorite, I told you I was sick. <laughs> As Mary went to Jesus' tomb, an epitaph of sorts had already been written, and it was not meant to be a kind one. Pilate and the Roman authorities had placed on the cross the phrase, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. It was meant to be ironic. It was meant to be an example to anyone who might oppose the power of empire who might try to rebel against that power, this was meant to send a message that if, uh, if anyone tried to uh, step up against the power of the empire, you would end up on a cross. You would end up in a tomb. As Mary heads to the tomb, she is immersed in a grief that has been caused by this crushing power. But when she arrives... The epitaph tells more about Jesus than that mocking epitaph that had been put on the cross. For those ironic words could not contain the word any more than the tomb could. And so on that first Easter morning, just as today, we see the fullness of God. Most importantly, as Mary strives to the tomb, she sees a God in Jesus who is very much alive. At first, it's, it's seen through the emptiness of the tomb. The stone's been rolled away. Then uh, she sees the angels. Then she sees Jesus himself. Jesus, who died on the cross, is yet very much alive. It's kind of like uh, if you were reading a book and as you read, the author has inserted herself into the story as a character. And she, uh, she begins to interact with those characters that she has created. And those characters maybe receive her with less than hospitality and end up persecuting her and end up killing her. Now, as we read a story like that, we might find ourselves sad. We might find ourselves crestfallen. We might find the emotions waving over us, and yet we would know 
that those characters don't really have the power to slay the author of the book. And that the author with the stroke of a pen or the tap of a finger can reinsert herself into that story any old time. That's how it is with Jesus. Jesus is not just some character in this world. Jesus is the author of life. As John says in the beginning of this gospel, he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through him. Without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. What has come into being in him was life. Jesus is the author of life. As the author of life, he can write himself back into the story at any time he chooses. Now, he doesn't just write himself back into the story out of spite to, to prove that he can best the Roman authorities or anyone else. It's notable. Jesus chooses not to appear to Pilate or to the, to the Roman soldiers or to the chief priests and the scribes and Pharisees. He doesn't knock on the door of their house and say, hey, I'm alive. How do you like them apples? He appears to Mary, one of those that he truly loved. And he appears to her in, a, in, a, in an intimate, in a personal way. And that's how Jesus comes to us too. Jesus comes to us and cares for us. Jesus comes to you. It's interesting how the story unfolds. Uh, Mary really doesn't get it for much of the, for much of the Easter story. She arrives and the, the tomb is empty and so she runs over to Peter and the other disciple and she says, they've taken my Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. She doesn't get it yet. And then she talks to the angels and they say, why are you weeping? And she says, they've taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. She doesn't get it yet. Then she talks to Jesus himself and mistakes him for the gardener and says, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. She doesn't get it yet. She only gets it when she hears Jesus look her in the eye and speak her name, Mary. And it's then that like a light goes off. She, she melts, Rabuni, she says, teacher. Maybe you remember when you were a kid and you, you got yourself almost lost in play, playing on a playground and hitting the swings and the slide, but... All it would take is your mom or your dad or your grandma or grandpa or your uncle or your aunt calling out your name, and you would turn your head and look. Maybe you've recently gone to your mailbox and, and had a nice big stack of junk mail <laughs> and just flip through all those pieces that, that just speak to you so warmly by calling you resident. <laughs> and then finally you come to a, a letter that's got a real stamp on it where someone has, has taken a pen and actually written out your name and address. Makes you pause, doesn't it? Maybe you've, you've been to a party and, and you walk in and you feel that total social awkwardness where you, you don't feel like you know anyone there and you kind of feel like you just don't even belong and then all of a sudden someone calls your name and you just light up. That's how it is with Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is relentlessly alive. Jesus resurrects because he loves you. He calls you by name. One of the most amazing principles of the universe is, is the speed of light. It's really incredible when you, when you think about it. If you, if you had a high-powered flashlight and stood at the, uh, at the equator and turned it on, in one second, that light could wrap around the globe more than seven times. Light is so fast. And yet, if you took that same beam and went to the edge of the universe, it would take 93 billion years for that one beam to span the observable universe. That is the width of God's love for us. God who cares and loves for that whole universe goes all the way down to you and calls you by name. Through the vastness of all that is, God intensely loves 
you. But the love of Christ does not stop with you. Mary could have uh, kicked back and relaxed. Jesus calls her by name. She knows that he is risen. She could have said, I have arrived. She could have sat back and pounded some chocolate. <laughs> That's not what she does. That's not Jesus' deepest hope for her. This is not a finish line. Jesus cares more than, about more than any one individual. Jesus wants it all. Jesus wants us all. And so in the midst of that deep personal love for Mary, he asks her to spread the news. Do not hold on to me, he says, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Jesus wants her to go. Don't hold on to me. Go to your brothers. Go. One of our previous churches, the, uh, the organist drove an uh, a awesome little Volkswagen bug. It's, uh, it was very notable through town. You'd see her driving and, and, and just you, wave, you had to wave. And uh, she always had it kind of festively dressed for any of the holidays. And, um, and one day, uh, it was the day of a parade in town, uh, she decided that she would just go get some personal business done. So of all the things in the world, she decided that would be a great day to go to the mattress shop. So she took that little Volkswagen bug, drove to the mattress shop, and they, uh, they, they put some slats on her car, but they wouldn't fit inside because, you know, it was a little bug. And so the slats are sticking out the side. It's dressed up for the holiday. She starts to drive home and forgets that it's the day of the parade. So she drives through downtown and not really thinking. She sees the police officer waving her to, to turn onto the street, and so she does so. And she's sort of lost in her own business when she realizes that... Uh, that there's a marching band in front of her. And people are waving at her. And in the rearview mirror are clowns. Accidentally, she became part of the parade. That's kind of what happens at Easter. We may think we're on our own. We may think we're doing our own thing. But at Easter, Jesus incorporates us into something much, much bigger. Now, I'll be honest with you, one of the ways that we have complicated this worship service is despite all, all of us that are gathered here and, and the messiness of it, we're going to celebrate communion. This, we could have gotten you home at lunch on time if we'd chosen not to do that. <laughs> but part of the reason why we choose to do communion is that this is a way of stepping into the parade. Now, I'm not going to lie. Up before you is some delicious bread. Uh, and I, not too long ago, on a day where I forgot lunch, I went down into the kitchen and was looking for, you know, a little snack. And, and there was a loaf of bread in that refrigerator. And I'd be lying if I told you I didn't think about it. <laughs> I would have loved nothing more than to have a big old chunk of that for my, for my snack lunch. But I want to tell you that no matter how good that bread tastes, it doesn't taste as good when you're by yourself. There's something that happens when we step into the line. There's something that happens when we come together as the body. We join in something bigger than ourselves. The God who is relentlessly alive, who loves each of us so personally, loves the whole world, the whole cosmos. And at Easter, we remember that God is revising the story and inviting us into the great parade because all those dark places need light. All of those tombs need to be emptied. All those epitaphs need to be rewritten. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hop, hop, hop.
what a joy it is to belong to the risen Christ and what a joy it is to give and serve as unto the Lord. Let us now with glad and generous hearts offer God's tithes and our offerings. communion by intention, which means you will receive a piece of bread that you may dip into the cup. We will have four stations, two here in the middle and one along each side. All four stations will have bread and juice. Additionally, here at the two center stations where Ben and I will be serving, there is a gluten-free prepackaged sacrament. There will also be an opportunity for us to bring the sacrament to you, if that would be your need. Hear now the invitation, for this is the Lord's table. Christ himself is our host and invites all to his table. All are welcome. Christ calls us to seek to live in peace with him as well as with our neighbor. Alleluia and amen that all are welcome at this Easter celebration and meal. And now with joyous and reconciled hearts that have been prepared by the season of Lent, let us join in the great thanksgiving, which is the central prayer of the church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God. 
creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and set before us your way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, the author and perfecter of our faith. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the power of sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit, leading us out of darkness into your marvelous light. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in praise and thanksgiving and in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as the Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the bread of heaven that has come down for all who will receive. And because he is one, we who are many may be one. This is the cup over which we give thanks, the cup of joy and salvation poured out for all who will receive. I would invite the servers to come now.
all has been made ready.
pray. Holy God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you reveal yourself. We give thanks for your presence at this table. We give thanks for how you nourish us with your spirit and with this meal. Send us forth in the strength of your spirit and this meal to share your love and grace with others. Amen. Easter, we remember that death has no power over the author of life. God comes to us through Jesus relentlessly, calling us by name and inviting us in ministry to the ends of the earth. May we respond with all our hearts, all our souls, all our mind, and all our strength. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Happy Easter! Happy Easter!